Hi guys, it's Arch 110. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. Haven't done one of these for a while, have I? I'm always sniffing new things in the background, whether I review them or not. And what happens on my journey is I discover things and then things really disappoint me. So every now and then I do a video called five perfume discoveries and five disappointments and I chat about them. That's what this is. That's what's happening right now. So these are some things that I've sniffed recently. Let's just begin. So I always like to start with a disappointment because it means that the video will end on a discovery. The first disappointment is a tricky one because I was recently sent this as a gift by someone that I care about very much. We send each other perfume all the time. This one I tried and it actually made me a little bit angry, I'm not gonna lie. So it's called Amber and Patchouli and it's by Jo Malone. <sighs> what are the reasons this one was a disappointment? It was more of frustration than disappointment, actually. First of all, it doesn't smell like amber. Uh, it does smell like patchouli, that's good. The, the reason it was a little bit disappointing and frustrating is because you can't call a perfume amber and patchouli and not have it smell like amber. Also, patchouli is actually part of the amber record. So what are we talking about here? <laughs> I mean, the amber record can be switched around, it can be changed and always have to use patchouli. I do understand that. But the fragrance smelled like pepper and then it smelled like patchouli a little bit and then it smelled like labdanum. So it smelled like two thirds of the amber record with zero sweetness and you need sweetness in amber. You need sweetness in the amber record to give that kind of sweet warmth. Uh, you know, it's not always vanilla, sometimes it's tonka. But the reason I didn't like it is because it didn't smell like what it was supposed to deliver. Also, it was incredibly weak. It didn't go anywhere. It didn't last five minutes on me. Okay, that's a bit of an exaggeration. Maybe after half an hour, gone. It was just a confusing ride. Amber patchouli, patchouli's part of amber. I do understand that you can have a, a perfume, for instance, like Shalimar, which is the amber record with an emphasis on vanilla. Uh, but this one just was, it just wasn't really anything. So hugely disappointing and just for me another nail in the coffin of the Jo Malone enterprise. Their perfumes for me just, they just don't float my boat. If you like them I do apologise but this is just an honest video. Let's talk about a discovery. The discovery I'm going to talk about is something that I am massively excited about. I will say that this perfume is so far this year the best thing I have smelled. It is by a very small independent perfumer called Darren Allen. He's based out of Pittsburgh, I think in America. Messaged him a few times. I was sent his five of his samples by a lovely subscriber of mine, Sarah Williams. Sarah, if you're watching this, thank you, because wow, discovery. And I am really excited about not just this perfume, but this guy in particular. He doesn't really have time to promote himself at all. He's too busy doing his love of perfume and making great things. So the perfume is called Sacred Smoke and this I can see in my future. This is a very cool representation of Nag Champa incense and it reminds me of my favorite perfume by Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab which is called Scheherazade but this is a spray form one, it's much more complex and Darren Allen uses exquisite materials and his style is, uh, if, if you're a fan of Francesca Bianchi from Italy or Papillon Artisan from the UK, he has the vintage thing down. Given, I've smelled five of his 11 perfumes. I will be doing a spotlight on those because I was blown away by the quality and complexity and just amazingness of his perfumes. But this sacred smoke, Oh, it's very, very cool. When it dries, it's not an overly smoky perfume actually, but it does smell like an authentic Nag Champa incense stick from India. And it's my kind of incense jam. I'm not really, I mean, I like resinous incenses, but this is like floral incense smoke. And it is exquisite and I love it. And I just applaud him so much. Let me just get the note list so I can tell you a little bit more about it. but. This is my favorite discovery of the entire year, which is why it's the first one in this video. Notes are cardamom, champaca, absolute. 
really expensive material, black pepper, halmadi resin, rose absolute, Egyptian, Egyptian jasmine, vanilla, labdanum, sandalwood, Himalayan musk, patchouli, and refined birch tar, which is where the smoke comes from. I've worn it twice. Uh, I really don't want to use up the sample just yet because I'm saving myself for a spotlight, but it's an instant love. Smoky-ish, dark, feels like I'm in an Indian temple, just hits every spot for me. My first discovery of the video. The next disappointment is by Aqua de Palma and it's called Yuzu something. I'll put a picture here somewhere. The reason this one was disappointing is because as much as I'm not a citrus lover, this isn't a personal thing, I know that Aqua de Palma are great at citruses. They're great at freshies. It's kind of their jam. It's what they do, right? I used to have a colleague that I worked with many years ago that wore quite a few different Aqua de Palma perfumes and I would always compliment him and say, wow, that's, that's really, really nice for a freshie. Freshies aren't my style. This one was a fail because it's, it's just a bit of a damp squib. It, it's pretty much a zingy yuzu fragrance with some aromatic feeling, but not really much else going on. It's very thin. And when I smell a citrusy perfume from Aqua de Palma, I expect some kind of greatness because it is what they're actually very good at. So this one for me was, I can toss you aside. I don't need to smell you again. Yeah, user is pleasant. It's kind of in the grapefruit realm, but really there wasn't much character or thought behind it or just anything exciting. It was just citrusy and bit herbs and then not really much, so disappointing. The next discovery is called Rosé All Day, and this is by another independent American brand called Gallagher Fragrances. I own and have tried one of theirs before, a chocolatey one, but Rosé All Day is the one that I keep seeing crop up in forums and in discussions in groups and things like that. And along with these Darren Allen perfumes, my lovely subscriber Sarah sent me the entire line of Gallagher fragrances. I am yet to dive into them, but Rosé All Day was the one that I snatched and opened straight away and was so impressed by it. Oh, it's a good one. Yes, it's a rose perfume, as you can probably imagine, but it's rose in a caramelized setting with lots of tonka as well. And they do say it's got a metallic note, which I don't personally pick up. Just yet, I've tried it three or four times, but for something that is gourmand, I can't believe how well balanced and not overly sickly it is. It's really, really cool, and I can't wait to actually fully wear it on maybe a night out or something like that. For me, not overly rosy, actually. It does lean more towards the caramelized uh, tonka side of things. And what I like about it is I've smelled this burnt sugar kind of note in perfume quite a lot. And usually it's just too much. Usually it just overtakes. It's too sickly. It gives me a toothache. It gives me a headache. It gives me, you know, brain ache, really. But they've done it just so in this one where the tonka is allowed to shine at the same time and then just drop a rose in there. And um, yeah, it, it's pretty cool. It, it feels very nichey, but it's definitely wearable. So I am looking out for this one. I'm gonna wear it a little bit more and do a spotlight on them as well eventually. I know that I'm slow with things, but guys, I'm busy and I work a lot and um, I have crazy parrots that dictate what I do quite a lot. But anyway, Rosé All Day by Gallagher. Great one. The next disappointment makes me quite sad actually because I really admire this brand and everything so far has been fantastic. It is called, I'm gonna butcher this one. Corpus Ecus, and it's by Naomi Goodsir. I've been waiting for her to release a new perfume for a long time. She only has five, and I like every single one of them for different reasons. Corpus Ecus, or Ecus. <sighs> it is essentially just a leather accord with a real big animalic emphasis. And I had great expectations for her new perfume because all of the others are so beyond amazing. I mean, really, they're very, very good. Unassuming little bottles, but very good perfumes contained inside. If you know Nuit de Bacalite, you'll know what I'm talking about. This Corpus Equus, while being very strong, while being very well made, while being very, uh, I don't know, just very good quality and the leather accord is fantastic in it. 
For me, it didn't match up to the others and that's where the disappointment lies. It's an expectation thing. Expectation versus reality. When someone's had consistently good fragrances, I wanted greatness and really I got a kind of castorium civet overloaded leather, which would be great on its own, but judging it against the others, disappointing. Sorry, Naomi, because I've actually met her too and she is a cool ass chick, really she is. The next discovery made my little heart swoon. Yeah, it fluttered. This one came from a subscriber of mine and it was in a whole bunch of different stuff. There was a, a huge selection of multiple different brands. This one is one of those ones where you say, oh, why have I got to fall in love with something so expensive? Hmm. It is by Serge Luton's and it's called De Profundis. This had been on my radar for a very long time. I don't know, sometimes a perfume just gets you, right? And you kind of stalk it around the internet and you don't think you're gonna to get to try it or Sometimes you don't have time to go and try it. This one just crossed my path and I tried it on camera actually in the video about that parcel. And it was just an instant swoon worthy moment. Beautiful, delicate, purple flowers. I expected it to be kind of ethereal and it was kind of punchy and powdery and bright and just, it smelled like just a whole bouquet of flowers being thrown over my head, but purple and white ones. Only purple and white ones. So Deep Profundus is plum tree, it's chrysanthemum, there's violet, there's a little bit of incense, there's a, they say there's like a soil tincture in it, but it, it's never really earthy for me. It's all about a real open, purple, petally greenness, which is truly exquisite. I mean, I just, I can't believe it's, it costs as much as it does, but if you were wondering about the beauty of that perfume, but had never smelled it before, it is undoubtedly, so beautiful, you just can't go wrong with it. I, I just wanna smell it on people, I wanna smell it on myself. If I was getting married in a big long white wedding dress, I would definitely wanna wear that one, for sure. Uh, Ethereal-ish, ethereal-ish, but with enough body to give you, to know that you're wearing something very, very flowery. It's probably my second favorite thing I've smelled this year. That's why it's on the discovery list. Okay, on to the next disappointment. Let's go, come, quick. The next disappointment is the new, newest or at least new-ish fragrance to come from Etat Libre d'Orange and it's called Ghost in the Shell or The Ghost in The Shell? I'm not sure. Whenever I smell a Etat Libre d'Orange fragrance, a new one, I always go in hesitantly because Etat Libre d'Orange for me, I've smelled pretty much everything they've ever made and they are very hit and miss. They have some outstanding fragrances, but then they have a few that are just head scratches. You know, what, what was that all about? What was the iris one they did that was made by a computer or something? It's just terrible. Anyway, disappointing. You never know, it can go either way with them. I, I think I've had some discoveries with them on these types of videos before. Ghost in the Shell for me is, I mean, it, it, Take a fruity floral perfume from anywhere, really, any brand that you like, and give it, it, it feels like a slightly niche fruity floral. There wasn't really much exciting elements to it. I think it's probably a rose or something. Let me look at the notes. Oh, okay, it's not a rose at all, but it's kind of pink. That's maybe why I thought that. Anyway, it's an aquatic jasmine ambroxan moss skin note with some milk. Doesn't really feel like any of those. It feels like kind of like a nondescript pinkish floral to me. I will say the dry down had something that I liked. It did remind me of the first Paul Smith fragrance for women. I think it was just a pink square one. There was something bright and molecule powdery about it that I did think was quite great. But overall for Etat Libre d'Orange, just not very good, kind of run of the mill, some kind of flowers happening that you've, you've just smelled it before. And that's all I can really say about that one. It didn't inspire me to delve further when I, when I smelled it. I just kind of, oh, all right, okay, that's okay. Not really okay. The next discovery is one of the new perfumes to come from Diptyque and I really like it. It is the Eau de Parfum version of their 
Eau Rose, Eau Rose perfume. So the original Eau de Toilette of Eau Rose has Centifolia Rose, Damask Rose, uh, and Broxen, I think, and then a light, you know, it's a real vibrant, fresh, clean, not stuffy at all rose. The new Eau de Parfum version has all of those notes, but then uh, Diptyque have added in a whole bunch of chamomile and also artichoke, and it tempers down the freshness and brightness of the original Eau de Toilette and puts in this whole herbal grassy feel, and it's thicker in texture. And the rose actually is less i think it's less of a rose perfume than the original eau de toilette but i find it really pleasant it's so easy to wear and it's a nice twist to have this chamomile added in it just it adds a bit more oomph to the airy fairy eau de toilette version i've just really enjoyed wearing it i've worn it quite a few times and the lasting power maybe five hours on me i would say and it's kind of cleaner on dry down but as a new version on the original, Diptyque don't always change the notes between their Eau de Toilettes and their Eau de Parfums, but this one, you it's distinctly a different perfume and that's kind of why I like it. So that's a really good discovery. I think it came out in, it came out in February. So relatively new and pleasant, easy going, easy breezy Diptyque style, that one. And the last disappointment is Love Extreme by Killian. Bye bye Killian. Bye bye Killian. Uh, yeah, I have a bunch of samples sent to me by someone I can't remember. I think it might be John from Scented Snowdrops sent me what feels like a last ditch attempt to make me like by Killian. That's not why he sent them, but I said that to him. I said, this is my last ditch attempt. Uh, I haven't discovered all of them yet, but I randomly picked one out the other day, you know, picking stuff out of my treasure trove. Let's smell some things today. Let's have a sniff session. And I was completely underwhelmed again by, by Killian. I personally am over brands pairing beautiful white flowers with an overdose of vanilla. It kind of makes me feel sick, if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> this one is an orange blossom Neroli, and then dumped on top of that is a, a really overly smooth and cloying vanilla and when that happens what it does for me is it takes away all of the excitement of the white flowers white flowers are so special they're so beautiful there's so many great ones lilies and freesia and tuberose jasmine blah 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 all of those types of things right and why they always gotta be covered with vanilla what the hell it becomes this cloying smooth mess of something that I just don't want to smell like. I did a live video where I tried lots and lots of Guerlain perfumes that I was sent and I think half of them were this type of smell. Take a white flower, soak it in a gloopy thick, not very pleasant vanilla and you have Love Extreme. I think it's probably an extension of a different one called Love, but I actually tried, an, I think I tried a second one by, by Killian that felt the same, except it was just tuberose with loads of vanilla. Amouage did it with Love tuberose, except they added a bit of cream. Tons of Guerlain ones smell like that. I am over it. I am over that sort of smell. So disappointing again. Again, it's another nail in the coffin for by Killian. I will try the others though and see what happens because I have come across quite a few that I liked, but majority are just, by Killian it is a very expensive luxury brand for people that like sweet things. If that's your thing, that's your thing. It's just not my thing. Um, even if it was a vanilla white floral that had something else or a character, I would really like it, but it was just no, why are you charging people so much for this? I don't get it. So let's move on to the last uh, discovery of the video. The last discovery is the new fragrance to come from Imaginary Authors, a brand that I do actually get quite excited about. They are beginning to become a little bit hit and miss for me. Towards the beginning, they were great. But their new fragrance is called Fox in the Flower Bed and I love the color scheme, the packaging. I always want to try whatever Imaginary Authors release because I really like quite a few of their perfumes. I own Telegramma, which I think is so, so great. Anyway, Fox in the Flower Bed, pretty cool, pretty simple, 
What it is, is essentially a very nicely done Sambac Jasmine. There are how many Jasmine perfumes on the market? Count them on your fingers and toes and ears and everything. They're a dime a dozen, right? They're everywhere. It's not so often that a perfume brand showcases Sambac Jasmine as the main note. I don't know whether it's because it's quite expensive or maybe it's just not as easy to like as Jasminium Grandiflorum, which is the more common, you know, jasmine bush that you might smell wherever you're from, I don't know. But Sambac Jasmine is Indian and it has an entirely different character. It is, for want of a better word, sometimes actually urinous and strange and not the most pleasant thing. But imaginary authors have made a really nice, simple jasmine perfume that lets the flower shine, where if you didn't know what Sambac Jasmine smelled like after smelling this, you will know, you will be able to identify it. It's the main note of Alien by Terry Mugler, although mm, questionable, it is there, but this is more like the raw version of Sambac Jasmine. And imaginary authors don't usually do florals so much. They have floral elements to their perfumes, but they never really make a full on floral. So I was surprised by it. It was a discovery for me, and it's definitely something that I would wear. So it was pretty cool, I like it. I should probably mention that imaginary authors always have a fantasy note or fantasy theme or a fantasy accord. And this one is Mountain Air. They say that there's honey as well, tulip, pepper, thistle and frankincense. Really, it's about the jasmine, guys. If you're going to smell it, don't expect all that other stuff. Um, something about jasmine is powerful and dominant and it's a diva. So it's always going to make itself known. But anyway, I'm going to leave it there. That is my final discovery of things that I have smelled recently. It's nice to be able to talk about a few things. Um, yeah, I have so much more to smell and so many more videos to do. I'm kind of overwhelmed, but I'm excited too. So I hope you guys have been okay and taking care of yourselves. I'm Arch Momono trying to make the world smell better one video at a time. I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.